A person can develop swelling after surgery or an injury, and sometimes due to an infection. This could be lymphedema, swelling of tissue related to an influx of lymph fluid. Lymph fluid is found in your lymphatic system. Your lymphatic system is kind of like a second circulatory system. It's crucial for keeping you healthy. It circulates a fluid called lymph throughout your body, and this collects bacteria, viruses, all kinds of organisms, also excess fluid found in your cells and your organs, and the waste products from your organs and cells due to metabolism. Now the lymph, the fluid, it's a thin clear fluid containing white blood cells. It's normally used to bathe our tissues and then is drained off through the lymphatic system eventually being returned back into our bloodstream. So your lymphatic system carries this fluid and the harmful substances through your lymph vessels and these lead to collection ducts called lymph nodes. Within the nodes, the wastes are filtered. They're filtered out by lymphocytes. These are infection-fighting cells that live in your lymph nodes. And the microorganisms and the toxins are ultimately flushed out from your body. Lymphedema occurs when your lymph vessels are unable to adequately drain lymph fluid, so usually from an arm or a leg, and you develop swelling of this body part. Lymphedema is most commonly caused by the removal of uh, uh, tissues or damage to your lymph nodes as part of cancer treatment, including from radiation or surgery. It's also common after orthopedic surgery, such as having a knee or hip replacement surgery. It, it results from the blockage in your lymphatic system, which is part of your immune system. The blockage prevents lymph uh, fluid from draining well, and the fluid builds up, leading to swelling. There currently is no cure for lymphedema, but it could be managed, and this is important. So why is it important to treat your lymphedema? Lymphedema treatment is important because if it progresses, it has a progressive nature, meaning it gets worse and worse. It tends to get worse without treatment, and its worsening can lead to disability, disfigurement, like severe swelling. Your legs can swell up like a balloon. With an advanced case of lymphedema, ulcers and infections can occur. The, large, the larger your limb swells, the harder it is to manage your condition, and the more resistant your condition becomes to any kind of treatment. So what are symptoms of lymphedema? Mm, it could be mild, hardly noticeable swelling. It could be severe. That really affects your movement. Like you, you see this, there's an infection in Africa called elephantiasis where people get huge swelling of their legs. Swelling of a part or even the entire arm, that includes your fingers. Swelling of, of part of or even your entire leg, including your toes. A feeling of heaviness or tightness in the arms and legs. A reduced ability to move your hands and legs. Um, aching or discomfort. Um, increased frequency of infections to the region. Hardening or thickening of the skin, what we call fibrosis. So welcome to our nutritional support for lymphedema episode. Hi, my name's Jerry Hickey. I'm a pharmacist who also has studied nutrition, and I'm over here at Invite Health. I'm also the scientific director, and I'd like to talk to you today about the things you could do to help your lymphatic swelling, including the use of nutritional supplements. Please subscribe to the Invite Health podcast, and please leave us a review. You can also follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Invite Health. All of the information on today's episode will be linked in the episode description, and you can visit invitehealth.com for forward slash podcast for more information. So let's get going. There are many different causes for the swelling of lymphedema, but those causes can be broadly broken down into three categories. Inherited, you get that from your parents. Traumatic, an injury or surgery. And infectious. So injury or post-surgical lymphedema is commonly seen after an aggressive life-saving surgical removal of all the lymph nodes draining a body part when treating the cancer. Infectious lymphedema is more common, like down the tropics, where there's parasites. The abnormal swelling of lymphedema is often connected with breast cancer treatment, but also, like I said, um, with um, orthopedic surgery for an arm or a leg. But also with orthopedic surgery for replacing a knee or a hip. So when they treat breast cancer, um, you could see a development of the swelling in the arms or the hands or the breast or the torso. It's a side effect of the breast cancer surgery and also from the radiation therapy. Uh, lymphedema can appear in some people during the months, but sometimes even years after treatment ends. 
So what happens? The lymphatic system is part of your immune system. It moves fluid throughout your body. It picks up waste products, bacteria, viruses. Your lymph nodes filter out the waste and flush it out from your body. When something goes wrong, the fluid builds up. It backs up in your, in your tissues. And most often, your lymph nodes get damaged. Sometimes the vessels get blocked, but lymphedema can also happen without a clear reason. So there's symptoms. It can happen anywhere in your body, including your chest, your head, and your genitals, but it's usually in just one arm or leg. The swallowing might be so minor you barely notice it, or it could be severe. Who's likely to get it? Many people. People who've had surgery to remove lymph nodes to check the spread of cancer, especially breast cancer. It's very common with breast cancer even or treated with cancer surgery or radiation. Being older, being overweight, or having rheumatoid arthritis or psoriatic arthritis also can lead to lymphedema. You can also get it from uh, an infection, especially in tropical countries. Uh, there are some rare disorders passed in families that can affect the uh, development of lymph nodes and vessels in the lymphatic system. Now, let's go to a break. When we come back, we'll talk about prevention and treatment of lymphedema. This podcast is brought to you by invitehealth.com. For over 20 years, Invite Health has provided premium quality supplements and expert advice you can trust. Now, first-time customers can enjoy an exclusive offer. Visit invitehealth.com slash podcast or click the link in this episode description. That's invitehealth.com slash podcast for your exclusive offer on Invite Health products. Invite Health offers the resources you need to make important decisions about your health. Chat live with degreed healthcare professionals, get product information, and find retail locations near you at invitehealth.com. You can also learn about our new genetic testing program and our exclusive Invite Fitness Wellness Program. Follow Invite Health on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and be sure to subscribe to our podcast today. Now back to our episode. Okay, welcome back. We're talking about lymphedema. Let's talk about prevention. So... It's commonly related to surgery or radiation treatment involving your lymph nodes. Keep the affected arm or leg elevated. Don't apply ice or heat to it. Don't wear tight clothing. Don't wear jewelry. Jewelry. Don't wear a watch. Don't cross your legs while sitting. If swelling starts or you get other symptoms, let your doctor know, of course. But early treatment makes a big difference. So lymphedema usually can't be cured. Here's treatments. You can control the swelling and keep it from getting worse. Uh, try to keep a healthy weight. That makes it better. Uh, water pills like hydrochlorothiazide, they don't usually work. Uh, there are lymph edema therapists, specialized therapists. They can help you manage the condition. Uh, if it's severe, your doctor may want to do surgery. The doctor may actually want to remove some tissue uh, so there's less swelling. Um Let's, uh, if it's early stage, by the way, it might go away without treatment. So let's look at the evidence for nutritional supplements for helping lymphedema. There's um, benzopyrones. They're found in the skins of, um, of citrus fruits. They're sort of like flavonoids. And they've been shown to help with lymphedema. There's a number of studies showing this. Di diosmin is one that's been used frequently in these studies, diosmin. So, rutin, rutin is another. They're used for circulatory issues. So, this is a study from the uh, Henry Thomas Microcirculation Research Labs in Australia. And they found that uh, these benzopyrones are the only known helpers for lymphedema besides several other supplements. There's no drug for lymphedema at this point. They've been shown to help reduce um, um, lymphedema after a mastectomy and uh, also lymphedema caused by other conditions, including surgeries, and randomized double-blind crossover placebo-controlled human clinical trials. They don't work rapidly. So when they do a study for a month or two, it's not going to show an improvement. Um, at least six months 
but it takes years, especially with severe lymphedema, to get to swelling down. But you're going to want to do that because, like I said before, lymphedema is progressive. It gets worse over time. It's harder to manage. So here's one of the studies on one of these citrus fruit skin extracts. It's called Daflon 500 milligram. It's in the journal Angiology. It's the Department of Nuclear Medicine, Centre René Eugenin. That's in St. Cloud, France. Excuse, excuse my pronunciation. Uh, it's um, after breast cancer treatment. It's 104 women with lymphedema by their arm after breast cancer treatment. They were treated with Daflon 500 milligram for six months. Uh, they found that it really made a difference. They were checking the swelling of the uh, limb every two months and the underarm, and they found that the women with more severe lymphedema, it really was helping them. It was really helping improve the lymphedema. So here's a similar study. It's from uh, researchers uh, from academic research institutions and hospitals throughout Italy. And uh, they gave a combination of flavonoids, those come out of uh, generally citrus fruits but also berries, and grapeseed extract. They gave it to a bunch of patients who had hip replacement or knee replacement surgery. And after 30 days, there was a real improvement in the swelling. There was a 5% improvement in the swelling in the ankle area and a 3% improvement in the swelling in the calf area. Whereas the people on placebo, they had no improvement. So they said that the compound was effective in reducing the swelling after major orthopedic surgery. Uh, it helped reduce the symptoms of pain, itching, and burning. There was a study. I'm, 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 I'm actually having trouble locating the study now. It was up on the website for the National Cancer Institute and also the University of Maryland Medical Center. And it was women after breast cancer surgery. And they gave them a high dosage of grapeseed extract on its own over a six-month period. And it really helped reduce the, uh, the swelling, and it wasn't causing side effects. And they were using a pretty powerful dosage. They were using like 600 milligrams a day over a six-month period. I would split that up into two or three servings. But selenium, selenium is a micronutrient. It's a mineral. You only need tiny, tiny, tiny amounts, like the amount on a pinhead to retain health. But yet, if you lack selenium, you're more likely to have damage to your heart, you're more likely to have damage to your liver, and you're more likely to develop uh, several cancers. Selenium works in several pathways. Um, it's involved with detoxifying chemicals in the liver and kidneys. It's also involved in antioxidant protection throughout the body, including in the eyes and in the brain and in the heart, and in the liver and kidneys. But it also is involved with creating a master antioxidant called glutathione. Recently, we did a, an episode on glutathione. It was uh, a small report of patients who were having trouble breathing because of the uh, coronavirus infection, COVID-19 infection. And when they gave them glutathione, either by injection or as a supplement that they swallowed by mouth, it, it very quickly helped them breathe better. These people had problems breathing. I mean, real problems. Within a half an hour, they were breathing better. So selenium is involved in the process of recycling glutathione because they're not quite sure how selenium is helping lymphedema, but there's a number of studies showing it helps lymphedema, so I'll read a couple of them to you. Here's the journal Nutrients. It's Yonsei University in Seoul, Korea, the Department of Food and Nutrition. Um, the Department of Rehabilitation Medicine, Seoul National University College of Medicine, and the Department of Food and Nutrition, Brain Korea. <laughs> Brain Korea, how do you like that? So they looked at how selenium as a supplement would help swelling lymphedema related to breast cancer treatment. It was randomized, double-blind, placebo-controlled human clinical trial. Um, 26 women with stage 2 and stage 3 breast cancer-related lymphedema. They gave them selenium, and 75% of the people uh, showed an improvement. Um, with follow-up after the study, 
it was just a two-week-long study. So after the study ended, they continued to follow these women. At follow-up, 84% of the women on selenium, but only 10% of the women on placebo had a real improvement in their lymphedema. They were giving the selenium by injection in this study. So here's a second one. This is selenium in the treatment of head and neck lymphedema. Um, it's, it's the journal of Medicine and Principles and Practice. So it's 36 cancer patients, median age of 61 years of age. And they had uh, head and neck cancers. And after treatment, they had swelling. A lot of them had uh, lymphedema in their endolaryngeal region. So that's kind of like in the back of the throat. Your larynx, which is also called your voice box, it's involved with breathing and speaking and is involved with the process of eating. So these people were having dyspnea. They, they were having trouble breathing. And they gave them, um, they gave them selenium for six weeks after the uh, radiation treatment that was causing the swelling. 75% of the patients on the selenium had a real improvement of one stage or more for their lymphedema. I mean, it really meant, meant something. Uh, their quality of life greatly improved, significantly improved after using selenium. They were swallowing it. They were taking a selenium supplement. Uh, of the 20 patients who also had endolaryngeal edema, you know, swelling in their throat, 65% um, did not need any surgery because, you know, typically you need surgery for that kind of swelling because it's dangerous. So just a quick review and add a little bit more. Um, selenium has a number of studies showing it helps lymphedema especially related to um, cancer surgery, cancer radiation treatment. Um, beyond that, flavonoids like rutin and dalfon have been shown to help. Bromelain, which is a, a proteolytic enzyme, a protein digesting enzyme that comes out of pineapple, pineapple plant, has been shown to help if you include it with the flavonoids like rutin. Grapeseed extract has been shown to help. Now, what else helps? What else can help you manage your lymphedema? Before that, let's go to a quick break. Jerry Hickey, Invite Health. We'll be right back. This podcast is brought to you by invitehealth.com. For over 20 years, Invite Health has provided premium quality supplements and expert advice you can trust. Now, first-time customers can enjoy an exclusive offer. Visit invitehealth.com slash podcast or click the link in this episode description. That's invitehealth.com slash podcast for your exclusive offer on Invite Health products. Invite Health offers the resources you need to make important decisions about your health. Chat live with degreed healthcare professionals, get product information, and find retail locations near you at invitehealth.com. You can also learn about our new genetic testing program and our exclusive Invite Fitness Wellness Program. Follow Invite Health on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and be sure to subscribe to our podcast today. Now back to our episode. Okay, welcome back. Uh, what else besides nutrition can help your lymphedema? Exercise, gentle movements that squeeze your muscles where you have the uh, lymphedema, the affected limb, can help drain the fluid and make it easier for you to do everyday things. Y you have to do this as soon as you can. You have to start treating the lymphedema as early as possible because it'll just get worse and worse and it's going to make it eventually very hard to treat and manage and it's going to really affect your ability to move, and it'll increase your risk of having infections in your skin or blood clots. You just don't want to go there. So activities that get your heart pumping and make you breathe a little harder can also bring down the swelling a bit. So, you know, the lymphedema specialist can help you with that. A physical therapist that, that specializes in lymphedema can help with that. Usually your hospital would know somebody like this. Compression. There's different ways of compressing. Bandages. You wrap them tightest near your fingers and toes and looser along your limbs so fluid flows back towards your torso. The pressure also stops fluid from building up again once the swelling has gone down. A therapist can show you how to do this with um, liners or padding or bandages. There's also compression garments. 
So besides bandages, there's compression garments, garments which are a little more sophisticated. It's like a special cloth sleeve or a stocking that puts pressure on your arm or leg. That helps the fluid move through and out of your swollen limb. Make sure you wear that, by the way, when you exercise, especially if you're traveling, like if you're traveling for a long time in a car or a plane. Because when, you, when you're traveling for a long time and sitting for a long time, the lymphedema can get worse, especially when you fly high to high altitude. Um, usually there's a prescription needed to get the fitting. There's also compression devices. That's a trained therapist. They can use a machine, kind of like a blood pressure cuff. It helps move the fluid out of your arms or legs. They'll put a sleeve or a boot with a series of chambers over the swollen tissue. Uh, a pump fills the pockets with air and then deflates them over uh, a period of, in a, in a specific pattern over a period of time to squeeze the lymph back towards your body. Massage therapy, there are specialized massage therapists. It's, it's like a light-handed type of massage. It's called manual lymph drainage. It really does help. Now, any of these treatments, they don't last. The uh, lymphedema is not cured, it's managed. So you'll have to repeat the treatments, whatever treatment you pick. So with the massage therapy, it's a trained masseuse. They're a trained professional. They rub, they tap, they stroke your body. So they're trying to move the fluid away from the swollen area. Uh, you can actually learn to do this yourself from them to a degree. Uh, you really need to avoid infections. When you have lymphedema, it really increases your risk of infection. So, you know, you have to, like, be careful with cuts and scratches and burns. So if you're gardening or something, wear gloves, wear long sleeves, wear long pants. And if you're going to get a blood test or an immunization, have the shot somewhere else, not near the lymphedema. So if they're going to, if they're going to do a blood test, don't draw the blood from the uh, swollen arm region. Do it somewhere else. Because that can cause an infection. The trapped fluid in your tissue will allow bacteria to grow. And that, believe it or not, quickly could become serious. So if you get like a red skin or a red rash and have like, like symptoms, like flu-like symptoms, or pain or swelling gets worse, call your doctor right away. So thank you for tuning in to the Invite Health Podcast. You can find all of our episodes for free wherever you listen to podcasts or by visiting invitehealth.com forward slash podcast. Please make sure you subscribe and please leave us a review. You can also follow us on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram at Invite Health. We'll see you next time on another episode of the Invite Health Podcast. Thank you so much for listening.